Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen Highway Cemetery Commissioners meeting, October 7, 2019, 630. First order business, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank you all for attending tonight. We have a couple of uh, rather nice presentations. I mean, so often we do have good news to bring to the people. A uh, gentleman who we've been trying to get in to come in and see us has made himself available. Uh, secret to no one, Christopher Lindstrom, Boston College grad, NFL player, credit to the town, credit to Shepherd Hill, credit to his family, credit to the fine young man that he is. We wanted to bring him in and give him a little proclamation from on behalf of the town of Dudley. Chris is here tonight. So before I open it up to the board members to talk to Christopher. I'll ask Christopher, you'd like to say a few words. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for having me here tonight. It's a great honor and a privilege to be here. And uh, this means a lot to me because there's been so many great people in my life, my family, the community. And one thing you learn from being the guys in the NFL, there's so many different backgrounds to get people there and that level of success. And it really comes from their support systems. And so really, however that is, if it's teachers in the school, community, I have all of that here today with me, and that is really meaningful. And I could not be where I am today if it wasn't for the town and the community. And there's so many people that help you, support you, and you come back, and it's such a, really a privilege and means a lot. When you come home and you have so many people that are asking about me, caring about you, that makes you more worth it and gets you through the harder times where you really don't want to do something or it's not that easy. You know, you have so many people in your corner supporting you, and so I just want to thank the community and you guys and really just the whole town in the school because it's been really incredible. I can't thank you enough. And you don't know how much that means to me and how much of an impact that was on me. Well, as everyone knows, uh, that's, nice, that's excellent, Chris. Nice speech. There's been some other athletes from Central Mass that have done very well, including the NFL. But Chris is the first first round pick, I believe, from Central Mass. And has been nothing but a credit to himself and his team. So I'm going to open up to the board make some comments if they want to talk to Christopher. Anything you want to add? Mr. Joseph. Uh, Chris, how tall are you now? 6'4". Uh, 6'4"? Six four. Six four. Yes. 6'4", six 314 pounds. No fat on that. <laughs> Dawn, mom's here. Nice job. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Good to have you here, Chris, and we're just so proud and can't wait to start following you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Joseph. Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you for providing such a great example for uh, the youth that are going to follow you uh, for what hard work can really uh, accomplish. Yeah, thank you. And that's the biggest thing. Um, and I'm lucky my dad uh, was able to be in a similar situation. He played for a couple of years. And so one thing that he always said is you're ambassador of the game, an ambassador of your family, an ambassador of the community. And so that's what I really try and bring to everywhere, everywhere I do from community work to just everything daily. And so I'm ambassador. When I'm down in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, I'm an ambassador of the town of Dudley. So uh, that's just something I mean a lot. And uh, for, the, for the kids, uh, just keep working hard. And that's definitely something that I want to be because there's so many so many great and talented people that come through the town of Dudley every single day and every single year. And so if I can help provide the opportunities that I was so grateful to have for one of those kids, that'd be incredible. Excellent. Mr. Massey. Yeah, Chris, thanks for coming here. We're really proud to have you here, happy to have you here. Congratulations on all the success you've had and will have. Uh, and thanks for being that ambassador. I was glad you said that because we always talk about, you know, making Dudley a destination for, you know, whatever we're doing, economic development, but, you know, right. you spreading the gospel of Dudley throughout the world, down in Atlanta or wherever you are, you know, was good. So a little piece of, uh, piece of the town goes, goes with you wherever you go. So, yeah, thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. For coming. Mr. Siganevich. Uh, I remember when, way back when, when you played with my son, mm -hmm. uh, your family, every, everyone has just always been great. And just seeing you now, you're, you're humble still. You don't have that 1,000-yard that stare. You're still the same kid I remember from 
geez, freshman year in high school. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And I think that that stems from the community, really, and how it, there, it's, it's, it's impacted my life so much and so connected to it that I don't even really think of that. I'm always a part, really proud to be from, from this town and from this area. And I love, like, just going to the local restaurants and seeing everyone, and it's, it's, it's really great. Mr. Rudo, would you like to add anything? I think the board said it beautifully. I have nothing to add to it. So before I read this proclamation, I just want to tell a quick story. Uh, last year, everyone knows I worked for the post office, so I was inside for a really? while. Yeah, and I was kind of poking around. I saw this pretty big, like, envelope. Wait, were you poking around on time? On, uh, for, for a reason, a good okay. reason. And I noticed it was something for Christopher, and I lost his mother's cell phone number, so a friend of the family who was a friend of mine, long story short, we connected, and it was Christopher's diploma. So as great it is, the honor to be an NFL, I remember talking to his mom, and I said, the biggest honor, he graduated, he graduated on time. He's got a degree from BC that no one can ever take away from him. Yeah, uh, thank you for getting that to me first time. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows well, where it would be now, right? <laughs> right, right, exactly. So she wanted that, that paper, so it's, uh, it's definitely a big thing. And, and something we're learning in the recruiting process that opened the door for so many other, other athletes from Dudley Charlton community at Shepherd Hill is just the, how important academics really are. And so being able to have people, teachers in the school system, people in the community that really emphasize the academic portion of it and people really don't see that is there's a standard to play in the NCAA for academics and it's a road that it's kind of difficult to navigate and there's so many great teachers out there that are supporting supporting kids like myself to get through those academics that provide the opportunities to get into BC and if it wasn't for the teachers at Shepherd Hill the community those roads would be uh, closed for a lot of people so there's so many great people in this community that are doing great work to help people like myself uh, get degrees like that so Excellent. thank you again mr. Joseph before I read the proclamation yeah real quick and thank you Stephen um, to put a exclamation point on this just like your mom and your dad you're a class act That's it. Yeah. thank you very much that means that means more than any any award I could receive so I have a little uh, like a proclamation, I guess we had our fine administrative assistant put together for us. It's from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, town of Dudley, and it's headlined, The Odds of Making It Into the NFL. 1.1 million high school players, 300,000 high school seniors, 70,000 NCAA players, 15,000 NCAA seniors, 6,500 players scouted by the NFL, 350 players invited to the NFL Combine, 250 players drafted, and one is Dudley's finest. So we give this to Atlanta Falcon, Christopher Lindstrom. Thank you, sir. Well, like I said, we do do some good things, but right now we have to take a quick recess. We're gonna uh, set up for a capital improvement presentation, which is gonna take a couple of minutes, so.
right there. Okay. We can just do it. Who's the, the other one? Zach is here first. Danny? Yeah. I didn't see Dan. Yeah. Zach is here. Dan? Yeah. yeah, he's right there. I know, I know the names. I have. So, Mr. Chairman, we're going to go on, we'll move on B and C. Yeah. Do you want to do that or now? B and 4C, and then we'll move. Let's I think that'll work. Yeah. We'll do the I, other ones at the end. The best is over okay. the show. I'd thank everyone for the uh, acceptance of our little interruption. Again, we have a couple of nice things that the Board of Selectmen has to do. We're going to recognize a couple of Eagle Scouts tonight, one who is present. I'd like to call up Zachary Kanoya, please. Zachary's project was he des designed and facilitated a project located at the Dudley Municipal Complex at 71 West Main Street, Dudley, Mass. Whereas his leadership skills enabled him to gather a workforce to build a fire pit out of concrete pavers with a spark screen for protection and surrounded by landscape stone for the enjoyment of all residents in the town of Dudley. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen for the town of Dudley, extend our sincere appreciation and hereby present this proclamation to Eagle Scout Zachary D. Kanoya. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your project. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, so I'm Zach Knoyer. I'm from Dudley. I grew up here my entire life. I actually go to Nichols College in Dudley now, too, where I'm a junior. Uh, so you can't get rid of me. I'm never leaving. Uh, <laughs> okay, we got room for you up here someday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, obviously, I did my project here at the town hall. So obviously, I can't thank you guys enough because you played a major role in me getting my Eagle Scout. And I just want to take a minute to thank everybody that helped me along the way, obviously my friends and my leaders in scouting, but also my parents, because as they tell you, they did probably more of the work than I did. <laughs> nah. I might have heard that once or twice. Don't, don't, be, don't be so humble. <laughs> I was there, I saw it. I, <laughs> you were. Snake in the grass. <laughs> well, thank you, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any uh, questions for Mr. Kanoya? No. Wait, one, do you know how many presidents were Eagle Scouts? I don't know the exact number, but I, I'm sure it's large. You have a number. So uh, we'll look forward to you doing bigger and better things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Uh, congratulations. I think I get to see a little bit of uh, all the hard work and uh, um, rigmarole that goes into uh, what, what you needed to do. Uh, the best part was the leadership you provided to the younger boys. Uh, uh, at, at an early age and moving forward. So congratulations. Thank you. Well, like I said at the beginning, this is, this is one of our good ones. We, we, you know, we get invited a lot to ceremonies and we always try to send a representative. But it's really nice to see him come in because, as you stated, you're, you're a Dudley lifetime resident. You're still in Dudley and nobody knows the hard work except you and your folks and other Eagle Scouts. Who, as Mr. Joseph said, some have gone on to the highest in the land. And, Others have gone on to bigger and better things. So I certainly congratulate you on everything you accomplished. Thank you. Mr. Massey. Well, Zach, congratulations. You know, it's nice. We always think of you every time I see that out, out here. And uh, just another long line of uh, Dudley Eagle Scouts. You know, we tend to pump them out like uh, clockwork, which is great. It says a lot about the character of our kids. And just seeing you as a little, little guy and growing up and the fine young man you are now is just impressive I'm just blown away a junior and Nichols wow so you know I think that says a lot about Dudley as well because <laughs> yeah. we do turn out a lot of Eagle Scouts here and yeah. that shows you that it's not just the Eagle Scouts doing that work that people have to help them yeah. and I think Dudley does a great job with that great we're proud of you Zach Thank congratulations you. bud Mr. Ziganovich how long Zach how long did it take you to get an Eagle to get well the Eagle I joined Cub Scouting mm -hmm. when I was six or seven at the earliest I possibly could, and I passed my Eagle Board review after my 18th birthday. So it took so about me about 12 years. -ish. Yeah, about 12, just 13 years. Just under the wire. I, I, I just slid in at the end. <laughs> I, I think what's remarkable about that, and in this day and age of everything instant, you can buy things, have it delivered tomorrow or the same day. I mean, that takes that's delayed gratification. You're working for something that you're not going to see for over a decade so and that's remarkable congratulations thank you that's that's why I appreciate the leaders because I mean I joined I was seven years old you're a young kid you don't really see the end but mm -hmm. all the leaders make sure that you understand what you're working towards and you understand what the end goal of it is and I'm so thankful that I stuck with it awesome so before I call him up to uh, receive his proclamation I think we deserve to give him a nice round of applause Absolutely. <laughs> 
Danny a little bit? Uh, I, I can, one to come up? Yeah, mm -hmm. Maybe snap a photo with the board if you like. You know Al, right? Our food and rep. It's that one. Yes, that one. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Zach. Congratulations, Zach. Congratulations. Good job. Back is this for you. You're supposed to do up the left. <laughs> hey, now, now turn around. Uh -oh. Your mother needs pictures. Can't see Mr. Marcy. Right? Uh, Do you want to switch? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> want to switch? Uh, if you're in front of Marcy, you could block him out. Oh, block. On me. <laughs> I'll say not hard to do. Congratulations, Congratulations Zach. Congratulations, Zach. Good job. We're gonna we're gonna read this one too, and then try to have him come in at a later time. Might as well. Wait until he comes in. Yeah. Hey, why don't you hold it? Wait for him to let him come in. Okay. Do you know his, John? I, I'll. You know what? He's, he's in Connecticut. Yeah, he's in oh, Connecticut. Oh, he'll be home for Christmas, I'm sure. Yeah. There you go. He's in Connecticut. So we're going to do number three, then we're going to take a couple things out of order. So we're going to ask for acceptance of minutes, September 23rd, 2019. Wait, are we going to acknowledge the second one? No, he's not here tonight. So we're we're going to try to win. Win. Oh, he will come, come in. Back. Tom will yeah. get, yeah. try to get him in so he can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were going we were going to read it, but Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the minutes of tw September 23rd, 2019, as written. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept as presented, as written. <laughs> Any further questions or concerns? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Michelle, Mr. please note I was not Mr. present Ruta. at that meeting. So, Mr. Chairman, could we could we move? A and D and E, for A, for, for D, because we don't have any election workers here to, tonight to be reappointed, do we? So we can move well, A. The town clerk, Laurie's. Well, we'll do, we'll have. We'll. No. No, but I want to just move them to the end of the agenda. Yeah, we're just going to try to, um, we have some. And E, to. Let's just do the mark. Yeah, we have a couple of appointments yeah. that we're just going to try to do. B and C, please. Yeah, people that are present. BNC. So I'll ask Mark Landry to come up, please. Mark is seeking an appointment as a member of the Finance Appropriation Advisory Committee term to expire 6-30-2023. like to say a few things about yourself, Mark. Certainly. I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Thank you for having me here. Um, currently, I'm on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. I just want to expand out to get some more um, experience in different fields in Dudley and help out since I've born and raised here. And uh, looking up there, I see a lot of good examples on how to move forward and really help the community, and I want to thank you all for that. Well, we'd like to thank you for volunteering, Mark, to serve. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Joseph. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about yourself personally, too? Yes. The folks will know you. Okay. Um, well, I was born and raised here in Dudley. Um, I'm a veteran. Um, I'm involved with a lot of the veteran activities in Webster and Dudley and have been for about a decade now. Um, I've been involved with the town of Dudley for about five years, so I'm still a little fresh to it, but know my way around. Um, I'm 49. I have a wonderful family at home who's relaxing right now while I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Never expecting to have to say anything, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. So they're probably laughing. <laughs> Who That's are you good. currently employed by? Uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Any volunteer experience in town other than capital improvement? Uh, wherever it is needed, I volunteer. Whenever I ask to come to functions. Um, never too busy to help out and make things happen here in town. And moderated candidates might too. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So he's trying to drag that out of you. Uh, great. Yep. Candidate tonight. Yep. Another humble one. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So we should probably answer it the same way you did. Fantastic question. Thanks for asking. Thank you for asking. <laughs> it was, it was some, that's great. Yes. Always positive. That's it. Any other further questions from Mr. Landry? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint. <laughs> Mr. Massey. Mr. Chairman, I move that we appoint Mark Landry as a member of the Finance Appropriation Advisory Committee with a term to expire 6-30-2023. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further questions or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Unanimous. With Thanks, gratitude. 
Outstanding. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Right. See you in a couple weeks. Yep. <laughs> Budget time. Oh, no. oh, parade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the parade, Mark, not the budget. <laughs> he said budget, I say parade. Veteran for, veterans parade, right? Next up, police reservists. Mariano Conti, Elizabeth Wayna. Terms to expire, 12-31-2019. Police Chief Wayna to present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking this up uh, at this time. As you know, back uh, in August, I believe on the 12th, the board made some conditional appointments uh, to, the, uh, to the reserve force. Uh, so both Elizabeth and Mariano have completed all the uh, the steps so far to this point. So that's why I forwarded their names to you for uh, appointment to the reserve force. Uh, the, uh, the appointment will go till December 31st of this year, and at uh, that time, as you know, we usually submit annual reappointments for all <coughs> excuse me all the reserve officers at that time. So uh, I think they'll be both uh, great additions to the department, and uh, they'll begin their training and uh, be out and be out and working on their own probably very soon. Excellent. Now, we met you both before, if you want to say a few words. Much appreciated. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Weiner, and I'm from Grafton, and I am very happy to be here, and I thank you all for having me, <laughs> and I can't wait to serve this community. Excellent. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Mariano Conti. I'm originally from Worcester. I just recently moved to Dudley uh, a few months ago. And so I'm just happy for the opportunity to serve the community that I live in. Excellent. Appreciate so, Chief, it. now they both completed the Reserve Academy? Yes, yes. So they'll just be doing some field training with us and then be, uh, be cleared to go at that point. Excellent. Chairman? Mr. Joseph. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we appoint Mariano Conte and Elizabeth Warner as Reserve Police Officers for the term to expire December 31st, 2019. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further questions or concerns for the candidates? Hearing none. All in favor, state aye. 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 Unanimous. With enthusiasm. Welcome on board. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Let me clap a lot. Why not? Clap for everybody. Raise the roof, will you? Yeah. Want to come up? Or? Yeah. 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 I like stuff. the positive stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 He's already given orders. You. Got appointed tonight. Yes, you got appointed tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's smart. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anybody else in your family want to have a picture? Are you all set? Or? <laughs> okay. All right, guys. All right, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. It's all good. Oh. So good. Well, it's all good. Welcome. All right. So we're going to go back to 4A. Carol Barron appointed as a special municipal employee. Mr. Ruda. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm going to. I think that uh, uh, Carol Barron would do a great job as a. Uh, treasurer for the uh, regional school district. That's the reason for that she wants this special status. Um, I would recommend that the board approve it, but I would recommend you approve it contingent upon a letter from her current employer that acknowledges her eligibility to work, the additional hours, and salary. So I have no no opposition to the approval of the special sta special employee status, but I think it should be accompanied by a letter that. Sh that her current employee acknowledges that she's uh, received such status and she's eligible to work the additional hours and salary. So is, is she going to be the full-time treasurer for the school district? I don't think it's a full-time position. I thought that chairman. was Mr. Matthew. What, what's he, finance? That's the finance That's director. A, this is a separate. It's, it's a separate. It's a treasurer's position. She's currently the treasurer for Bay Pat. Right. It's not a full-time position. <clears throat> All right. All right. Mr. Joseph. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that the board appoints Carol Barron as a special municipal employee contingent upon receipt of a letter from her current <clears throat> employer indicating that she is available or that she is able. based upon her retirement, she's eligible to receive both the salary okay, based and upon a work the hours. 
Correct. That she is uh, able to work as a treasurer for the regional school district, our school committee. Which is it? School district. district. School district. district. <coughs> Motion made. Second. Seconded by Ms. Siganevich. Any further questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Unanimous. 4D, reappointment for election workers, term to expire 10 7 2020. Read the records for the names for the record Carol Antos, Debbie Bazildo, Janice Brady, Carol Cook, Mary Devlin, Cynthia Ivansky, Judy Joy, Evelyn Kulas, Margaret McCuga, Joan Putney, Marsha Wagner, Don Wilson Jr., Marion Armstrong, Liz Beals, Linda Brink, Brink, Emma Cody, James Dunn, Catherine Joseph, Jean Kondek, Diane Kazava, Norma Morocek, Nancy Roy, Norma Waterhouse, Lorraine Winslow, <coughs> Ann Atkins, my favorite, Josephine Bottieri. My favorite. Joanne Brinka, Betty Dupree, Kathy DeRosia, Laurie Joseph, Alice Kwiatski, Alice Langloy, Ann Rosinski, Ann Stohai, Louise Williams. So moved. S second. I just asked the town clerk, are we good with that? Okay. Motion made and seconded. <coughs> Further questions or concerns? Hearing none, all state aye. 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 Unanimous. Oh. Opposed? No. Abstention? Yes. 401. I was going to get there. <laughs> Four. Oh, I'm right. I didn't even catch that. Good call. Two of them. 4E, appointment. New election worker, Leonard Nicoletti. Term to expire 10 7 2020. Is Mr. Nicoletti present? You want anything to add to that, or just you want to vote? Yes, please. Good evening, Laurie Smith. Right. Um, Leonard Nicoletti was unable to attend tonight, but he is willing to serve as a new election worker. Um, the reason I am only looking for one new election worker right now is because we have the expertise of the ones that have done it in the past coming back. And I was looking to try something new by having someone come in at the end of the night to help <coughs> with the write-in, so I have someone fresh that hasn't been there all day. And I think Len would do a nice job at that. Good idea. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Massey. Second. Mr. Joseph. Any further questions for the clerk? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Unanimous. Thanks, Good idea, Laurie. Thanks, Laurie. Yep. Thank you. Next up, public comments, citizen comments, informational. Anybody wishing to be heard on agenda not on, uh, item not on the agenda that does not require a vote of the board, Mr. Bazinet. Mr. Ed Bazinet, not to be confused with any other, any other Mr. Bazinet that may or may not show up tonight. Ed Bazinet, Historical Commission. A walking tour of the Dudley Hill Historic District, self-guided, fresh off the press. Yay. Actually, if we'd seen any of you on Saturday, I would have hand-delivered them to you, but. Mail must go through. Kid stuff. We did have them <laughs> out and available. They will be available, um, they're, they're in the building, in the selectman's office, the town clerk's office, um, well, we might have some at the treasurer's office, and there'll be some at the um, Black Tavern outside next to their bulletins for the town. And eventually, I hope to have a, a little um, set up in the town common where you can just flip the thing up and pull one. It, it starts at the <coughs> common, and it walks you through a few of the obvious places until you get to the Carter House. And I got to thank um, Pat Korch for working with me to do the graphics um, and also the local cultural council, which uh, funded the printing. So no cost to the town. That was excellent. And we're ready to go. I mean, this is the, the start. We'll be celebrating next June. But by then, all of you will have walked along and checked things out. Ed, you want a chance? You want some of that posted on the town's website? 
uh, some kind of link yeah. maybe? Yeah, yeah. They have a PDF to it maybe? Or? I'll just coordinate that with uh, Deb and, and the town administrator. Let me personally <coughs> No hats tonight. No hats tonight. Who did the printing in? I, I considered wearing a hat tonight. Thank you. But yours, I have so many to choose from. <laughs> Thank you. Ed. I got stuck trying to make a decision. That's nice cool. paper too. So do we have the? I've already done. So Ed, do you want to give a plug to the person that uh, printed it? Why one what? Give a plug to the printer. Who the printer was? Uh, Karen, local printer. Did a good job for us. Timely oh, wow. turnaround. Uh, worked very closely with us, and. It's been a long, long process. A lot of the detail comes out of what we had to gather for the um, district that was approved on 9-11 in Boston. <coughs> so we just kind of cut and pasted. And this gives you a pretty quick run through. And you can do it on your own. It told, tells you to go right, go left, look across the street. and. The thing that I really wanted to do was just get a taste for people. And if you look in the back, it says further information. And we will have the actual full district um, report, the proposal, online as soon as we get the electronic version. And in the meantime, you know, you can go to the Masick book and read up on some of Dudley's history. Good question. Excellent. Mr. Joseph. Ed, could you also give us a, a brief recap of how the event went Saturday because it was the first time that we had um, the Dudley Grange, the Black Tavern with all of its crafters, the artisans, and our farmers, Dudley Farm Days. Could you give us a brief recap on how that went? The sun came out, the wind abated, <coughs> the people arrived. Um, I will say the artisans were there at the crack of dawn, almost, <laughs> almost ahead of us, we, and we were trying to set tents. Um, but all the events walk, worked together well. Now, it was a little, little unorganized getting, getting going, um, but everybody there was with the intent of making it a, um, a good event. So accommodations were made, people were shifted over as needed, and everybody seemed to have a, a good time. Uh, you know, a hayride wagon going around. The kids good had crowds. a little hay maze that they, they were going through. So there seemed to be good things for the little kids. There were good things for all, all your wives to shop at, you know, in, in the crafts. And of course, there were French fries and apple crisp and. Uh, the usual things that lure you up to those kinds of uh, things. You had a lot of crafters. How many crafters did you have, and what what was it like in terms of attendance? People. Like we had, um, I, I think they were in the 40s, 40 something crafters, uh, finally uh, strip spaced out. We only needed to move one of them over onto the to the common at the end. So yeah. we had a couple of drops, so we weren't squeezing the common, but. That worked out well. We were able to accommodate all the agricultural people and um, get their feet wet on what it's like to be up there. And we, you know, we have returning crafters every year. So good crowd. Good crowd. Yeah. Excellent. Cars lined up all along Central <coughs> Road. That's great. Yep. Congratulations. Yep. It was it a fine day? If it were the day before, the day after, the weather would have been atrocious. Yeah. You lucked out. Lucked out. Thank you, Ed. Okay, and people should just plan while it's nice and you know it's still decent out. Pick up a copy, and here or up there in the at the tavern, um, and take a little walk. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for your hard work, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Town administrator report. Well, that was, we back up a second. Anybody else waiting, wishing to be heard? Not on the agenda. Town administrator report. You want to move it? You want Mr. to Mr. Chairman, can we do I'll do mine with the department head report. Okay. Around town focusing on local business. We don't have one tonight. License and permits, do not have any. Public hearing, do not have any. Laurie Smith, town clerk, vote to approve a request for new voting equipment. Mr. Chairman, this vote is required when whenever a town or municipality switches voting equipment. The board's required to vote to approve, so that's why the town clerk is here tonight. 
We have a copy of the motion that was prepared should you decide to approve it. Laurie, good evening. <clears throat> Good evening. So this is a process that Aura had started a couple of years ago. Um, she did the research. We have the bid. I received an updated bid, which they kept the same price as when they had originally done it two years ago. So that was pretty decent of them. Um, in this bid package that you have there, they will buy back the old equipment because they'll use it for parts. So we were able to get $2,000 off for that. I have witnessed these machines being run. I went to the Sturbridge election in June, witnessed them firsthand. They run really efficiently. They're a tiny bit slower going through, but it's more accurate and it's easier for the workers because it will show why a ballot will get kicked out if it does get kicked out. Um, so as mentioned, we would need to have you sign this, make a vote tonight to approve the new voting equipment and disband the use of the AccuVote, which is the old voting equipment. Um, we already do have the funding, or had already gone ahead. The funding for this is totally in our budget right now. I am going to be meeting with the Capital Improvement Committee after this just to formally go through it with them as well. <coughs> And then after, if you vote in the affirmative on this and you sign this, I have to let the election division know within five days that this is the vote you took. Any questions for the clerk? Uh, one to the town administrator. Mr. Joseph. Does the motion uh, need to state the amount of funds and the source? No, I, I believe that Mr. Marcy is looking at the pre-written, pre-prepared motion for the board to okay. read. I believe this already went to capital improvement at one point a few years ago, Good. and this is just a refreshing. Refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Lori, thanks for this. Um, sure. you know, anytime we can upgrade it, equipment is a great thing. Can you summarize again, like expand a little bit on like what the benefits are, like what makes it better, and everything? Our so people other know. machine was pretty old. It had been around for I think the whole time Aura had been here. They're phasing those out. These are the new machines that they're going to. So you can't, I don't believe you can even purchase the old machines anymore. They're just using them, the parts, like the ones that they buy back to repair the ones that are out there right now. So I, for one, would feel more confident having an election knowing that the machines were not going to break down in the middle of the election. Um, not that they were to that point, but we might as well get some money for them while we can okay. going forward with the new machines. And the impact to our voters, they still fill, fill in the circles? Same thing. The ovals? Same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thanks. Any question? Mr. Joseph. People are going to want to hear this answer. Okay. Will the purchase of this equipment in any way expose the voters or voting list to uh, hackers? I'm sorry, what was that again? Will the purchase and use of this equipment okay. in any way provide additional exposure of our voter registration list to potential hackers? No, no, they've got this secure. They're they're watching out. This this is the new up and coming machines. There's I think they said over 180 towns that are already using this. In many countries, they're using it as well. That's so important it's secure and for them safe. to hear. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Any further questions, mm -hmm. Mr. Sigonetti? Is this hooked up to the internet at all? The the voting machines are they hooked up? Not that I am aware no. of. I don't think so. I haven't had the training on it yet, but I don't think so. Okay. Good. I was just thinking with hacking, yeah, that would, would have to be you don't touch risky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there'd have to be someone somewhere right. with access to it. And if it's it looks not like into the internet, it's good. not it Looks like the, it's, they go, they get stored on memory cards versus like uh, the ticker tape at Which the end of the Which is what the old one had, the memory cards. Did that one have one too? <laughs> yeah, so that's that's fine. So it's just an upgraded version of what we have. That's right. All right, Mr. Johnson. So uh, I heard a lot of uh, nebulous terms of how this is being paid for. What's, how, how exactly is this being paid for? It was, several years ago, it was put into the town clerk's budget. I don't remember the source of funding from several years ago, but it, it, it's still in her budget. I believe it went to a capital So the source improvement. of funding will be a line item within our budget. Rich, it went to a capital improvement, right? <coughs> the 20? Well, we have it. It's all the counts. <laughs> it's all right. He confirms <laughs> we have it. Any further questions? It's definitely in, the, it's definitely in our budget. Right. There's no question. Mr. Massey, would you like to read the motion? Uh, yeah, sure. As required by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 54, Section 34, we hereby vote the use of the ImageCast Precinct Optical ICP tabulator at the presidential primary election 
on March 3rd, 2020, and thereafter, at all primaries, preliminary elections, and elections held in the Town of Dudley until otherwise ordered by vote of the Dudley Board of Selectmen. Said electronic voting system shall be used in those polling places designated by the Board of Selectmen. Further, the town will discontinue the use of the AccuVote optical scanner in any and all elections held in the town of Dudley. Nice one. Motion made. I'm going to second it. Mr. Joseph. But I either want to make an amendment or I want to ask the mover if he will accept adding the wording that the source of funding shall be the uh, town clerk's budget. Yep, I accept that. I well, change, I'm in my motion to have. I want to just check with the administrator because this was a pre. Oh, that's right. Pre. Uh, I, it, I as long as you add the, <clears throat> as long as you add the source of funding at the end of the motion, yeah. I don't see where it would impact the. Wait. The. the uh, okay. I'm all right. I'm Hold on. Wait right there. Rich Carmignani, town treasurer, only six feet pole. Not nowhere close to 314. Can hear Rich. <laughs> Being cynical, sir. Okay. It's in the budget. There's 21,600 and and it's in the uh, it's in the 2020 budget. So it's it's appropriated. It's already been appropriated, correct. So I guess the vote for <coughs> funding. Thank you. So it's Thank okay, you. Jonathan, yeah, to add that to yes. it. So we're gonna add the line that the Source of funding is already approved in the town clerk's budget. Yep. I, I amend my motion to that. All in favor, state aye. 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 Unanimous. Lori, is this a single unit or multiple units? We're going to have four. There's going to be four of the different voting. So we have three precincts, and then we'll have an extra two. I know it's on the specs. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, thank so you. So we'll have four. I'm going to hold off on 10B for a moment. I'm going to ask 10D to set sure. the vote to have trick or treat. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Laurie. On Thursday, October 31st, 2019, from 5.30, Chief, good. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. The, the only thing I would ask when you vote on that is to give me and the uh, emergency management director and the police chief the flexibility to adjust those times and perhaps even the date in accordance with what the recommendation is from state DPH for the triple E threat. We still remain under that 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. moratorium. So, I mean, I, <clears throat> I think we'll probably get a deep freeze before then, but if we don't and we don't have the opportunity to meet again, I'd like to have the flexibility to work with the team over there. And so, that, so that little window scrape the other morning didn't count? Apparently not. <laughs> Guys, both good with that? I'm fine with it, yes. Fire and EMS, you're good with that? So I guess we'll, uh, before we take the vote, we'll just add... Uh, give the authority to the fire and EMS police chief and administrator to adjust <coughs> as Triple E sees fit. So moved on all that. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further questions or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Unanimous. Board member comments? No, no. We'll do that presentation last, I think. All right. Mr. Joseph. Surprisingly, no. All right, we're all done. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, Johnson. if we could go to Mr. Abraham's well, we, next one. We, oh, we're going to do yeah. board? Okay. Might as well cause it'll be easy right. and then bring him up. Well do, <coughs> I'll do yours real quick. Sure. Um, so we had homecoming day a few weeks ago. It was a big success, a lot of booths, a lot of uh, clubs showed up, and uh, we had a dunk tank. We had to dunk some teachers in the water, which was really fun. Uh, Shepherd Hill won that game uh, against North Middlesex 53-21. to and then uh, last week, uh, Shepherd Hill lost to St. John 63 to 52, which is actually a pretty good score, <laughs> considering their scores in the past against them. Um, and St. John's is number one at the time. Yes, um, I believe Shepherd Hill is top five right now, something like that. Yeah. Um, so there will be a football game on Friday at 3:30 versus Lemonster at home, Carmignani Field. Um, the band won at Melrose again um, with a score of 85.7, and we took all caption awards uh, best music, best visual, and best percussion. <coughs> um, there's staff development on Friday, so no school on Friday, so all the kids can go to the game if they want to. 
Monday is Columbus Day. We don't have any school on Monday either, so four-day weekend. Uh, Micah Band Home Show is on the 12th of October at 1 o'clock, and Shepherd Hill will be performing at 3.30. And there's a mattress fundraiser on the 27th, I believe, and all mattresses are 50% off, and the benefits go to Shepherd Hill Music Parents. Oh. Excellent. That's about it. Any questions for Al? Well. Hearing none, we'll accept this report as presented. Mr. Johnson, board member comments. I have none. Time. I just want to echo Al. Uh, a lot of stuff goes on at Shepherd Hill to be in award winning. It's just it's amazing what they do up there. But that's that St. John's score was really an eye opener. That that was done with no overtimes. That was a straight right. four quarter game. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only is Shepherd Hill still ranked in the top five, I believe the the uh, high their average is the highest scoring average in central mass for football so yeah. everybody up there keep up the good work athletics academics mm -hmm. and other extracurriculars and speaking of uh, good athletics i think uh, i believe kevin mensa got 2000 oh, i think it was like rushing yards at it's uconn like, yeah uconn yeah. for he's like the ninth uconn person to do that so that's pretty insane too yeah and uh, along those lines sean mckeon if it was on the preseason mackey award uh, watch list, which is for the best tight end in Division One college football, mm. voted on at the end of the year. It's like the Heisman of tight ends. Wow. Mr. Massey. I have nothing else to add, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Siganovich. This is like the football meeting. Everything's oh. football today, front to back. No, I'm good, thank and you. And scouts. The fantasy team's five and a half. I'm four and one. Oh. <clears throat> Departmental communications real quick. Fire and EMS. I just wanted to remind the board that the open house and the ribbon cutting is October 19th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we're going to have the safe house there. We're going to have uh, the lake radio there. Um, there's going to be a table for children to do activities and stuff. I don't know exactly what they have, um, but the Chamber of Commerce has been helping us. Um, Mark Marziotti. He's been doing a great job helping me. Uh, we're going to have Sturbridge Coffee Roasters there. We're going to have the uh, the pizza truck from Black Dog Catering in Putnam, Connecticut. Uh, compliments of Ramco Construction. So um, it ought to be a real good time. I just wanted to remind everybody, and I'll uh, send out an email and remind the invitation to department heads and the board members and but it's all over social media and I think a press release went out today so awesome thanks chief thanks Dean police highway water sewer George Real quickly, uh, just let the board know, uh, smoke testing was completed a couple weeks back. Uh, the results weren't too bad. Uh, they're going to be identifying certain areas that they found just as, uh, to see where we might be uh, buttoning up a little bit better there. The hydrant flushing is still ongoing right now. That's going to be a little while into the, into the, uh, into the uh, October time frame, probably just in the beginning of November, just for a number of reasons, manpower, water, uh, conservation, things like that. Um, the upcoming thing now is meter reading. The starting metering this week. If you happen to see some leery working guys with green shirts come around your house looking for something around your, your house or your bushes, they're probably looking for the reader or they're talking on their cell phone just pacing back and forth. But uh, they'll be doing that for the next two weeks or so, uh, so we'll be completing that. The other thing is uh, people on the Mason Road, Dudley Oxford Road, Wayne Ave, June Street area had experienced some dirty water last week. We were working on a hydrant and due to the fact that the hydrant was into some plastic piping which wasn't proper the whole hydrant and gate valve assembly shifted and blew right out and almost hurt one of my guys uh you know this is something that we're we're seeing a lot more where, where this uh, stuff isn't being monitored from way back when uh, developments were put in subdivisions with piping uh we were able to secure it and uh, we had to shut the area down but in when in doing that we caused a lot of dirty water. So if people do have dirty water, even during for, uh, hydrant flushing, make sure that they let the water run and call us if they have a problem and we'll be glad to come up and assist. All right. George, um, Thanks, at one man. of the meetings a long way back, you were reordering some radio readers. How, how much of the town is radio readed and how much is still? Right now we probably got about 400 
left to go because some of them also from back 10, 15 years ago when the batteries are dying, so we have to go back and replace those too. <coughs> so we're working on it. We just allotted, uh, we have a warrant article to allot uh, about $100,000 for water and sewer together uh, to get that up and going. Uh, we're, we're really trying hard. We just got some new software in uh, and equipment to make the, uh, the radio reading go more efficient and be able to detect uh, more things, but we're just getting into it now. So this is the, uh, the new uh, reading time to let that uh, system work for us and see how it does. So Nobody has to call for it. You guys are just going to update them as you go along, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, George. Any questions for the department heads? No. Hearing none. I uh, want to thank everyone for indulging us tonight. We have the um, capital improvement program grant plan presentation, which will be next. It'll be next, Mr. Chairman, if Mr. Abrahams can come up. <clears throat> this has been, a, I'll let the town administrator, but this has been an ongoing with all departments, department heads, and mostly here tonight. I thank everyone for being here tonight, and I thank everyone for their patience as we begin the presentation. Mr. Uh, Mr. Administrator. As uh, Mr. Abraham is setting up, I just want to say that the department mm -hmm. heads have been very, very helpful in you know, not meeting once or twice. We've met three or four times at least and really dug down and looked at their long-term capital planning needs, and they've been very forthcoming and very helpful and receptive to the plan. And I think it's going to be a helpful tool for the town and as a whole. Um, and the treasurer and the town accountant have also spent a lot of time working with me on this, so I appreciate that. We need to ask. You, you want to just wait a minute until we get it up on the screen? Yeah. And we'll get going. That's what I was going to say. Um, I'm all set. Yeah, I'm all set. Great too. Okay. Yeah, we're good too. Do you want anybody else up there presenting, or is he going to handle it all? Mr. Abrahams, will do. if if Rich wants to come up in case there are any questions, or if any town uh, department heads are here and they are any questions pointed towards them, they're here to answer questions as well. So. I guess we're good to go. Sorry. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Matt Abrahams from the Abrahams Group here to talk about the capital plan that we've been working on for the town. I will show you a large Excel file that we have been working on for the town in a moment. I just wanted to um, say some brief comments prior to that. So the town has used funding from a community compact grant available from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to bring us in to create a 10-year capital plan for the town of Dudley. I've met with town departments that have capital needs to understand what the needs are, an estimated cost on each capital project or capital item, and timing for when the project or item will be needed. I had subsequent meetings with the departments to ensure that the capital plan created for each department accurately reflects the needs of the departments. I worked with the town administrator, the town accountant, and the town treasurer to understand the funding sources generally available to the town to fund capital projects and capital purchases. I worked with the town administrator, the town accountant, and the town treasurer to understand the town's existing debt and general goals and plans for initiating initial additional, initiating additional debt. I worked with the town administrator, the town accountant, and the town treasurer on presenting capital spending projections <coughs> in effective ways both in town and graphical format, and you'll see that in a moment. In a moment, I will present what is likely the final version of the capital planning file we have put together for the town's use today and in the future. It is important to understand that this file is to be used as a capital planning tool and by no means reflects the town's intentions to fund certain capital items. Funding all the items in the plan is unlikely. It is a tool to help the town make sound and prudent decisions for what capital projects and purchases should be funded. This file shall be maintained on at least an annual basis. Without updating, the capital needs for the departments may become outdated and the financial projections included in the file may decrease in accuracy. Once I hand the file over to the town, it will become the <coughs> town's responsibility to maintain it. I have put together detailed instructions available in the file to help with this. The town can always contact me with any issues, questions, and comments if necessary. So I'm going to put the file up on the screen Ooh, right now. See it over there too. Mm -hmm. he, can, no, he can turn that. No, no. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because everyone else can see this. Oh, yeah. It's good. 
Everybody okay with this one? I can make the screen larger if that would help. Do you think it's okay as is, or would you, would you like okay. to say? Okay, all nodded, yes. Sir. Can I ask one question before we go? Yes. How many pages is this uh, program proposal How many contain? pages is it? It's How many pages? Tabs. It's an Excel file. It has multiple tabs. If you were to print it out, it would print to many pages. Many pages? Yes. I wouldn't rec A million? A thousand? A hundred? Um... 50 plus? Yeah, I would say probably between 1 and 200. Okay. All right, so how can we access this from our computers at home? Well, the town will, the town will have this file in its possession in the very near future, and if the, the board wanted to use the file on its own, it would have the ability to do that. You just need to work with I believe the town administrator's office to obtain the okay. file. Be patient with me. That's fine. I, uh, will it be available uh, on a thumb drive, for example? It could be. Rich, uh, 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 Jonathan, and the reason I say I, would, I, would, I just want to be able to look at it carefully as time goes on. I would make it available in locked format so it couldn't be modified. Right. No, ed no editing, right? No editing at all. And that would be available. Um, we could put it in Dropbox. We could give it to you on a thumb drive. Whatever would be convenient. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very there much. There are certain, there's one extremely large tab, and I will show you that in a moment. That would be the one that I would not recommend printing, but there are other tabs that are formatted for printing and could be printed very easily. Thank you so you could much. look at those for sure, and it's just that one tab, which you'll see, which I would recommend not okay. printing. Or you could print it. It's just you probably wouldn't be able to use, okay. use the printouts of that one tab. But as, as I walk through it, I'll, I'll speak about printing and, and what makes the most sense. So the tab that we're looking at right now is the, the capital plan tab that we've put together for the highway department. I wanted to briefly walk you through this. Let's not focus so much on the top as what's down here. So if we start here, for example, this is just one item, the street sweeper, and I believe that that is something that is currently on the town warrant. I'm going to ask members of capital improvement if they'd like to come up yep. so they can see better. Anybody wants to come up, just bring a chair up. So you can see in the list here that for each item, for each project, we've listed what the department is, we've listed what the item is, we've listed what the estimated cost is, and in some cases the cost is very much, um, I guess, an, a, a, it is, they're all estimated, but some of them um, the department has weren't as comfortable with, so there are costs in here that uh, aren't that departments are not fully comfortable with and will be updated in time as they become more comfortable with them but we we tried to get a cost in for every single item or project that we could and also there's an estimated fiscal year for the year in which the, the project would start or the year in which an item would be purchased and we also try to include a comment for each item or each project just so that it was almost like a, a brain dump all the information that we learned about that item or project while working with the department heads. And you see going downward that every single row is the exact same setup and all the items that were identified while we worked with the highway department are here. And then down at the bottom we have a notes section which is there really because there were other things that I, that I felt should be included on this tab that did not make the capital list. Just some other comments that I thought should be um, documented and that's what this section is there for. So it's more just for reference but these don't necessarily reflect capital needs of the department. And then up at the top is back to the, where we started. There's a table 
that has the fiscal year and the totals by fiscal year for the items on this tab. And you can see at the bottom that it lists the total number of items, 40, and the total costs are over $4 million. And then also a table that's reflective of what the estimated costs are by fiscal year going left to right. Each tab, we, we generally created one tab for each department that we worked with. And then there's the municipal complex tab, which is really a tab designed for items related to this building, but also related to town-wide that didn't fit some other department. But you can see as we go downward that it's set up the exact same way. And there are comments down at the bottom. And again, the same graph up here at the top. So as we go out to the right, you'll see that there's a tab for MIS, there's a tab for police, there's a tab for fire, there's a tab for library, there's a tab for water and sewer over here. And then the last tab is a debt tab that I received um, from the town treasurer because we wanted to include um, the current debt on the books for the town when we were doing our debt projections, which I'll show you in a second. Now here's the big tab that I was talking about. With this tab, this tab was designed to pull all the information in. Oh, before I talk more about this tab, let me just say one other quick thing about the other tabs I was just showing you. Let's go back to highway, for example. This tab and the other departmental tabs can be used. So let's say we get into the next budget, the next year's budget process. And town staff wanted the department heads to take a look at what was in the, the capital plan in the last year and wanted to update it with the latest information. This tab could be simply created, moved to its own file, and sent off to the department heads. They could take a look at it and provide updates and send it back to town staff to then work with that information and then update this quote unquote master file. So if, you, <coughs> if, town, if the town staff did not want the department heads to get their hands on the entire file and just to focus on their particular de departmental needs, you can just focus on those individual tabs and send those off to them. Okay, so back to this large tab. And this is the one that I wouldn't necessarily re recommend printing. If I go to the print option, it currently, well, 77 pages. That's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> But the other, the other tabs I just showed you print to, print to like three or four pages. So you can look at each individual department's tab easily, and that's formatted for printing. This one is just so much information here that I would not recommend printing it. And I'll show you what's here in a sec. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see going down the left that we have the departments, and you'll see some of the items that we were just looking at on the highway tab. This tab is designed to pull everything in. So this is a town-wide look at everything all together, okay? And it's a long list. I'll show you when we get down to the bottom later, but there's something like 180 items in here, okay? So columns A, B, C, D, E here are data that's taken from each of the individual departmental tabs. You have the item, you have the cost, you have the year, okay? And one thing that I feel is very important I didn't want any changes to be made to the items here in those columns I just showed you. So someone can't just come in here and write whatever they want. Um, it's not going to let that person make those, make those changes. The reason why is because we want to make sure that the departmental tabs, the ones I showed you earlier, are, is what's driving the information that's shown there. So the updates need to be made on these tabs. So for example, if we wanted to just put something like Matt's truck here, it can be made here. And if you go over here, you'll see that Matt's truck shows up there. So the point being, we want to make sure that all the changes are made on these tabs rather than on the large tab. And there are, there are checks in place to not allow that to happen. However, starting with column G, you can make changes. So this is where the planning aspect comes in from a town-wide standpoint. What items are we going to look at funding? And how are we going to fund those items? So you have all the information here from all the departmental tabs. These are what the departments feel they need over a 10-year period. This column right here, this yes column, 
include, you can set it to no, which basically means it's still in here, but the funding of that item is not going to be shown as we move off to the right. Basically, when we start looking at dollars, funding this item is not going to be include, included in those dollars. So it still maintains the item as a need, it just doesn't include it in the funding portion of it. We'll leave that yes for now. Here is the funding source. There are several options available in this drop-down box. These are options that I worked on with, with town staff. I have defaulted them in this way for now. This is just a default as a first pass. Any amount between $60,000 and $250,000, I put as a non-excluded borrowing. Any amount above $250,000 is an excluded borrowing. Any amount less than $60,000 was either water retained earnings if it's a water item, sewer retained earnings if it's a sewer item, or free cash if it's a general government item. And then after those designations were made, based on conversations that I'd had with town staff, I went back through and made some additional changes to put some grant funding in there and some other funding in there. And you may see these as we go downward. So for anything that's determined to be debt, either non-excluded or excluded, we have certain borrowing assumptions that are defaulted here as 20 years and 4%. We understand that maybe these aren't reflective of what the current market may have for borrowing assumptions, but this is what we have in there for now, and they're easily changeable. If you wanted to change it to 2% to two for example, you could simply just make that change. But for now, we have it defaulted to 4%. And you'll see as we go out to the right that this is where the actual funding by fiscal year <coughs> is available for review. So if we compare this row, for example, to this row right here, you'll see that the top row that I've highlighted is a borrowing. It's, it's designated as a debt, non-excluded borrowing. You'll see that there are multiple years worth of payments because that's because we've projected debt by fiscal year going out to the right. It's 20 years of debt going out to the right. The bottom one we have is free cash, which means it's, a, it's an item that would just be purchased in one year. We have that as just a single year purchase in the amount that's shown over here. Okay. Yeah, just to show you, it goes all the way out to the right. 20, 20 years worth of borrowings. So these projections are in place. Another thing that I just want to quickly point out is inflation. We try to focus on dollars being in here as current year dollars, 2020 dollars. Well, we're looking at items 10 years out. So if we're talking about an item that's $100,000 today, is it going to be $100,000 10 years from now? Probably not. So we have an inflation factor in here, right here. Currently, it's set to 0%, to but it can be set to whatever, perc whatever percentage you, you want to include, and the numbers update going out to the right in, the, in the, uh, those columns I just showed you. Just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. And then d if we go all the way down to the bottom, this is where the whole, the total area is. As I said, 183 items. The total amount is, is over $40 million. And it has it broken out by department here. The reason why it's broken out by department here is really just for reconciliation purposes. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about this right now. But we do have the actual projections out here to the right based on what the funding sources are. So with all of the borrowing assumptions that we currently have in there, that $40 million goes up to over $56 million. And we have it broken out by water, sewer, and general government down here. Okay. So this is the very large tab. This is what I would recommend the town use for actually trying to make decisions. And anything that is not likely to be funded in a given year, or at least in the year that you're focused on, you could easily set all these to no and then just be focused on the ones that you're serious about funding. We're going to ask questions as we go along, Matt. Okay. That's fine. Yes. Matt, Mr. Chairman, um, what, how do you account for priority? I know we have yes or no from uh, should we include that. That's is that how you plan on priority, or did each um, department set a, you know, 
zero one I don't know whatever scale we could use the department heads to submit their priorities they're all pri and they're and all then, high pri I meant high and then the board of selectmen set the priorities within okay. that year okay but I already, unless it's water sewer then it's enterprise correct right but <clears throat> right but it would be nice if we had an easy way on I love this that's all in one place um, that we could kind of say is there was one more column that would allow us to say, you know, which bucket would you put this one into? This is a now, this is a next year, maybe, or a, something along those lines. I don't know what that would be. That so would help if us you, if you, change it. If you change that tab to no, yeah. like Matt explained earlier, it, it doesn't get rid of the item. It continues to carry it. Yeah. But if you say no to funding it, you're saying no to what your department had said for that year as a priority in that department. I would assume too. So that so the decision making process of what the priority is, we assume that the department heads know best what the priority is within their own, within their own departments. So that decision making process is whittled down to the board level what the, the what the priority is for the town. But it doesn't make that doesn't necessarily make that item go away. It still carries. No, it. you see what I'm asking though, right? <coughs> if, if, was, if, was... if Dean said these twenty things are all. I, they're burning. I need them. They're number one high priority items. You know. Then it's a public policy decision, isn't well, it? Isn't it, isn't well, it uh, when they do their annual report, the, the, we suppose we get a report from the Capital Improvement Committee which states going forward what's the priority items. They're, they're the ones who winnow it down with the department heads. If something the department head doesn't like the way the Capital Improvement Plan presents their annual report, then they come to us and say, I want to try to fund something else instead. That they did, they chose not to. So we get that report. Okay. Well, I I assume that department heads have already made their priorities by putting the items in the years Correct. that they did. It's number one. And number the two, year. that okay. if there's multiple items for the same department within a given year, then that's going to take discussion and decision by this board with each department head. As to what within that group is a is a priority, other priority. Correct. All right. So and then there's the other decision-making process, which Matt will get to eventually, is how to fund that fund that item. Oh, that's fun. Can we talk about that. <clears throat> we will. Touch well, on there it. there is. We've actually whittled down some of the methodology behind that as well. But. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, sir. Okay. So. I mentioned earlier about some tables and some graphs. There's that really large tab. That's your planning tab. But let's try and present the data in an effective manner so it, you can help with your, your decisions, OK? So we have a tab here that we're calling Summary General Government. We have, going across the top, we have each of the departments. And again, municipal complex isn't necessarily a department, but that's how we grouped it. And the year is going downward here. These are the total needs, just the project and the items themselves, if it's, if it's to be borrowed, that is not included here. Just what the items in the projects cost, and you have a bar graph here that shows them by year. Okay? That's cool. Going below that, we have the total capital projected costs. These do include borrowings. This is everything together. And you can see that the costs go up from left to right because it's a plan that every year there's more being added and with borrowings there's just more debt taken on taken on taken on so it's not going to go down it's going to continue to go up that's what that graph represents below that we have a funding sources table <coughs> these are all the funding sources that we saw in the drop down box earlier on the other tab and based on the selections made on that tab these are the totals by fiscal year for each of the funding sources And then below that, we have a graph that represents that table we were just looking at. That's cool. And then below that, this is where the debt comes in. So I'll walk you through this as quickly as I can. This ta and I, I did put comments in red here to help design, to help design, to help explain what each of the tables represent. Um, this top table is existing debt, so this is what's currently on the books. And again, this is general government so this does not include water and sewer 
just in the general fund. Um, this table right here, and we, we have it broken out by excluded and non-excluded. There's not currently any non-excluded, but there, if there were, it would show there. Here's some other existing excluded debt. This is for the Dudley Charlton um, payments, the Town of Webster payments, and the Bay Path payments. This next table that's in yellow is in yellow because it was meant to be filled out, but there's nothing that applies here to this town. This was meant to uh, represent projects that have been authorized to be borrowed but have not yet been borrowed, so there's nothing that we had to put in there. And then this next table is what is projected for debt based on the selections that were made in, the pro in that large tab I just showed you a moment ago. So this is what we're currently projecting based on all the selections made. Now, again, when the town gets their, their hands on this, this may look very different. But for now, what we have in there, um, the excluded debt going across to the right, and then the non-excluded debt going off to the right. And then we totaled what's existing and what we're projecting based on what's in this file in this table here, excluded and non-excluded. And then your total debt number is right below that here by year. And then the next table shows what the operating budget is for FY20. And based on some increase, we chose 4% per year, what the projected operating budget would be going out to the right. I think that was based on 2.5% increase plus an additional 1.5% in revenues. Isn't that how we figured, Rich? So it's a, <clears throat> it's a pretty conservative estimate. The purpose of including the operating budget here was so that we could compare what the total debt number is to the budget number. And that's what this percentage represents. So FY20 is over 6%. FY21 currently is about 5%. And FY22 is about 5% as well. And going out to the right, it goes downward, mainly because there's debt coming off the books as we get out in those outlying years. So here's a table that just quickly summarizes the other excluded debt table above that had the um, Dudley Charlton payment and the Bay Path payment and the Webster payment. These are the totals by year for that. <coughs> and here is a table that if you were to provide a certain debt target, so this would be 7% of the budget. Let's say the town was aiming to have debt equal 7% of the operating budget. This would be the total amount remaining that could be borrowed to hit that, op to hit that target. So we put 7% in in FY20, and these can be changed, but 7% in for FY20, 8% in for FY21, 9%, 22, 10%, 23, and then 10% going across. So you 10 see- 10% number re represents the best practice of debt carried by your municipality. If it's green, it's good. 10% is what you want your ceiling to be in terms of carrying debt. And then one last graph that shows all the debt together as the blue is, ex is excluded and the orange is not excluded. So the graphs are a little tough because um, it's only <coughs> my screens are pretty small. But if you were to put this in print mode and actually print it out, these, these print out really nicely and much easier, much easier to examine if you were to print them. So another thing that's important to understand is that these graphs and tables update based on the selections made. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate that for you. Let's focus on this graph. Just try and embed this picture in your mind of what this looks like. Oops, sorry about that. One sec. This graph here. So if I go to this tab, and I'm going to go to the top, and I'm just going to start this is random. It's just going to start excluding a lot of this stuff. Not everything, but a decent amount. That's about accurate. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough random stuff. So maybe I should save this after? Is that what you're saying? No. All right, so if we go down here, this table actually here it shows us how much was included. So we went from 183 items down to 83 items with that. And if we go back to that graph, it looks a lot different. Yeah. 
So that's just, that exercise is just meant to show you that this, everything ties together in this file. So any, any changes you make to the funding piece, and granted we just excluded a lot of stuff, it'll show the impact on, the, on that other tab, the summary tab, with the graphs and the tables as well. And I just want everyone to understand that um, there's also a similar tab for water and a similar tab for sewer as this general government. We broke it up by fund. So general government's meant to represent the general fund, water the water fund, and sewer the sewer fund. And um, one last thing I wanted to mention was the town should ensure that it has a, a sound policy in place to be used as a guide for capital planning decision making. The policy should describe the actions necessary for town staff and or town boards and committees to review at least a five-year capital plan sponsored by the town departments, as well as the actions necessary for town staff and or town boards and committees to recommend capital projects and purchases for the upcoming fiscal year. Those recommendations should include funding sources available for those projects and purchases. The policy should be clear and concise and should be strictly followed. Now that the town has available to it a 10-year capital plan with the department's current needs, this plan can and should be used as a reference and a guide for all capital discussions that take place each and every year. For example, when departments go in front of the capital planning committee to discuss their capital needs, this 10-year capital plan should be involved in each and every discussion. The capital planning committee should use it to help determine the highest priorities for each department as well as at the townwide town level. So that's all, those are all the remarks I was planning on making tonight. I'll take any questions or comments. Question for the uh, town administrator. Who will be authorized to maintain and make changes in any of this database? So <clears throat> for the indiv individual department tabs, um, we've yet to come up with a procedure. We can either give it to the department heads to make the changes themselves, or they can give those, they can present those changes to capital improvement, and we'll make them internally. And I'd like to see a, just so you know, I'd like to see a limited access to maintain <clears throat> or to make changes. So this will be a, this will be maintained between the treasurer and the town account. Okay. They're, they're going to have ownership of the document. The capital improvement committee will also have will play a role in that, but they're not going to have. Yeah, I'd like to see that uh, policy once you got that in place. Well, the good thing is treasurer is ad hoc on the capital Correct. improvement, so right. there'll be direct oversight. Okay. To, to Paul's point, Rich, do you envision updating it for them or putting this on Office 365 so each department can have access to their own tab to update you, stuff? I think we, if I had my choice, it would be baby steps. Okay. There would be the original file remain unchanged, and if we needed to make a copy for argument's sake, Highway was the one that was used. Um, it would be a copy of the master file. It would be marked as such, and it would give the department head, Vinny, get a chance to go through and manipulate some data to sort of look at things. This is a very live document. Um, it's a Rubik's Cube. Turn it a few times and something's going to come from it. So it's a planning document. I would imagine the original would be marked as such, but as a, an exercise, maybe between the town accountant, town administrator, and, and me, I would would go through and say, okay, well, if we've got $200,000 in year three, where would you put it? And our little choices could be compared and it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a wrong answer. It would be the academic exercise to maximize and anticipate what's going to be there. Um, you, you would have memorialized something. You wouldn't have to lean over and say, Mark, Mr. Landry, wh what did we do? Was it going to be this year or next year? We would have that one single file <coughs> memorialized. Um, and there's notes in here that would say, it was passed in 2021 with the intention of funding it in 2023, or it was determined not to be got to have item, and it was removed from the list. Um, okay, it's it it's a tool. Being Matt, next own. time try to be a little more specific. Fire an EMS. We 
give capital improvement an updated plan every year at their request. But if we can make changes to our own, I mean, we created our tabs with with um, the gentleman in the corner. And when I think you should have access to your own tabs, whether or not you want to. <clears throat> I just don't want the thing to get screwed up. Is what it boils down to. So if oh, it's I mean, a I don't matter wanna, of like I said, I don't want getting the tab and you do whatever you do. The other stuff, make your priorities and submit it on that tab. That's right. fine. Like I just we had to make a change. Right. Like five. Like I, I should have access to mine. Steve should have access to his. Vinny should have access to his. Well, I think nobody that's what, else is. I think I heard Rich say. Rich said, yeah. if departments have their own control, you can go in and delete or change one purchase to put it off to the next to fund something differently. It'll give you your own. Right. This which doesn't do us any good unless you guys are making decisions. Right, which I've phone done. Phone I've made changes right. before based That's on priority. I put it out on a network drive and, and provide access to certain things. I think if, if, if we're going to give the department Thanks, chairs access to do that, that there needs to be some additional guarantees of communication so that you you and Deb are aware of this and say, well, wait, before you do that, uh, okay. I think there needs to just be that communication so that, like you said, and I would worry, so that things don't get screwed up. That's a concern. <clears throat> what a this, big database. What this has done is memorialize what the Capital Improvement Committee is doing, but expanded it to 10 years mm -hmm. and further. Correct. With debt, possible debt, possible source of funding. It's, Yep. I agree with the chief and Rich, I think, and Paul. The department head should have the ability to manipulate their data only to prove their case towards whatever purchase, which they're doing now. This, this is a better tool. Absolutely. Yes. All the data is correlated for us now. Mr. Johnson. So, so that, I think we're talking about two different things. There's sandbox files that we can yep. you know, manipulate and uh, the department heads can can, can have to play with and, and, and find all the different ways to do things. But then, to Rich's point, there's a, a master file that has to have limited access yep. so right. it doesn't get screwed up. So it's, I think you're all saying the same thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely figure yep. it out. It's not great. L. <coughs> I was saying, like, it would, could be like a funnel system. The department heads, you know, at the top tier, but there's still that financial advisory uh, oversight to make sure everything's you know all the ducks are in a row at the very bottom you know just kind of coming in right. and, and having that communication is really key between the department and the okay. FAA right. to make sure that everything is okay because this is really important for other things right. this also gives us the, the opportunity on a town level to run different scenarios for example if we defer maintenance on a generator for too long and it's planned to be replaced in 10 years, you see what happens when we end up having to replace it six years early. Just by looking at the graph, it's a perfect illustration of, you know, key is how different... Having to replace it. Having to replace yeah, that's it. That's the key. Town Treasurer. Matt, could we go to the one section there where we had our, our debt listed out against a 10% benchmark? And if you could have one thing printed out, for me it would be this. The anticipation that right now we, carry, we don't carry enough debt, if you could say such a thing in, in this day and age. Uh, for a town, we should have a little bit more debt. We go through an S&P bond rating, they're going to say, what are you carrying for debt? And we say next to nothing, saying we're fiscally tight. They're saying, they haven't planned for enough needs. And then at one point, there's going to be a spike. And I'm sure we can manipulate enough data to illustrate that point. The whole idea is we should be very close to the benchmark of the 10%. Obviously, we're not going to spend 10% so that we meet that metric. But the idea is that we, we might have to move a 2025 project out to 27. So when some debt is retired, we put it in its place. Along those lines, a lot of debt excluded items, the principal and interest payments are, are slowly disappearing and we need to replace those as well so that we have a more level, level portion of our tax recap sheet. 
Uh, so as everything's disappearing, we should be adding to it so there's no vacillation to the tax rate. Yep. Old debt comes on, let's take on some new. Let's plan to do it before we have a leak in the hallway or something like that. Um, that's my one takeaway from this. Uh, those dozen lines up there, that's, you know, that's, that's been pretty much what I've focused on, the idea that we should be having them there. Uh, whether we go to 10% year two of the program or we trunk, you know, we just sort of build up to it going to the 8, 9, or 10%, obviously 11's in there in the event we had to do it. Um, unfortunately, when, we're, when we have a project, we're not trying to find the project that makes the debt the 10%. We're funding the project, so it wouldn't bother me in the least to go up to an 11 because this is what it costs to repair the roof. This is what it costs to repair that, whatever it's going to be. So I think the most important part, Richard, what you just said, too, is when it comes time to do our bond rating and they look at, you know, everyone thinks penny wise, pound foolish, our belt's nice and tight. Well, the belt's so tight that there's no wiggle room when something does go wrong. Right. The belt's so tight that we defer maintenance on generators and have right. to replace them. Uh, let me roots. say this. Yeah, let me say this, and I'm sure all the selectmen agree that our goals always include trying to build up stabilization and capital purchase accounts so that we don't get nailed to things that become emergencies that get bumped down the line. I mean, and that's a given. I think we all agree to that. Excellent. Any questions, <coughs> Ms. Abrams? Yep. That's fantastic. Any questions for the yeah. Capital Improvement Committee who meet quite regularly under the radar? Nobody knows how important that committee is. I served on it for a couple of years oh. when it first formulated. It's, it's a fun committee. If anybody wants to volunteer to see where your town is, that's Maggie. She's been on for a little while now. She knows. Mark's been on for a little bit. It's a good place to start. We appreciate all the work everybody has Good done. Job, guys. Absolutely. Anything you guys want to add? No, that looks great. Yeah. Okay. Think, think about the fact that we have something that extends out past one year. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a, a blueprint for five and ten. Well, we're always going to be ten years out. We update it every year. We'll right. Be, we'll Thank be you, over Matt. forecast scenarios okay. ten years out it's consistently. Great. That's yep. an excellent great presentation. Thank Matt. you. Okay, great. Sorry to make you wait to the end, but we figured oh, no we problem. better do it this way. I understand. No problem. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, how does the uh, town administrator feel about briefly summarizing his report or delaying it? I can briefly summarize it, then, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, if you'd like me to do that. Yeah, try to hit the... Uh, good news or bad news for us? Well, hit there's the a lot of good news in there. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Rich. Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right. So the bad news is that we buy more solar credits than we could ever use. We have almost $100,000 surplus. It must have been a sale at the time. Okay, so we're getting <laughs> solar credits at a discounted rate to the point where we'll never ever be able to use them because we you don't use that much electricity. Yeah, talking with National Grid about the good news is that we we now know that, and now we're going to figure out how to get rid of it yeah. and renegotiate the deal. Mm. That's item one. Right. Item okay. two is the old skateboard park where all the junk vehicles used to be parked, which has now been cleaned out by the sheriff's department and the highway department. And we're looking at the possibility of maybe leasing that to the bu bus company or renting it to the bus company as another revenue source to park some buses here in Dudley during the school year. <clears throat> Good news, the Green Communities Grant that was stagnant since 2014, they finally released that $47,000, $46,000 um, that was remaining in the balance of the account. They've authorized us to apply that amount of money no longer to projects that weren't funded, such as fuel-efficient cruiser idling devices. Now we're going to apply that to paying off the debt on our LED streetlights, and we'll be able to do that in time. And so that's going to add to our bottom line free cash budget, which will have its benefits, which we'll see in a week or two. And then finally, DMA Holdings has asked to get on our October 21st agenda for the purposes of 
asking permission of the Board of Selectmen to negotiate a host agreement, I'd like to ask the Board to give me the permission not to put them on the agenda for that and wait until after the town meeting because I frankly don't have the bandwidth to deal with that right now. Are they, are they good with that? I haven't, I wanted to get some. So when is the earliest we can bring them in? November 4th, or did we have a meeting November 2nd or 4th? First week of November. So it just pushes I'm okay it up two with weeks. That. Yeah, budget's a priority, I think. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan, how much, how much on the ground, like, do you have to be in with that? Can we give them permission just to approach, well, no, we have to codify it first, right? They came and approach council. So I don't even want to give you the wrong instructions. I've actually already called council to tell them that they've asked for permission to come in and ask our permission right. to negotiate a host agreement. I'm waiting for guidance on that. So I think the short answer is they don't, council can be here for that meeting. All they're going to do is simply make a request of us to negotiate a host agreement. Yeah, and from there, we the, the negotiations will begin or not begin, depending on what the board decides. So, what's uh, DMA? The, um, the people, folks want to do the um, marijuana grow facility. Okay. All right. Well, I guess my, my point being, how much Angry how much ours. would it take away from you? I know you I know you're busy with the budget with the town meeting. Is it? I, well, I, it's really dependent on. The fact that they called me the next day means that they want to rock and roll on it, and I don't want to have to take the call and answer the questions a week before the town meeting. I just don't. I, I want to give it my full attention when the time comes. I just don't know how much we could just take you out of the loop in the beginning with town well, council. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, let me just ask: if they come before us, what is it that they want to do on that October meeting? They want us to take a vote to allow town council to begin the community host agreement correct the they want us to they want they're asking our permission to negotiate or to begin negotiations on a host agreement so m i'm thinking that like the next day if we grant that permission if the board grants that permission i'm going to spend four or five hours on the phone you know right up until town meeting a day so i just don't want to be in that position all right okay I'm okay with it. i mean it, if you think when, if you think it's a fatal mistake, I'm, I'll I'll make oh, it work it, somehow. It's different no between way. fatal mistake and make sure we convey the right impression to oh, them. I'll convey the correct absolutely. Okay, I'll tell them that, that exactly what I'm telling you. I just don't want to give it short shrift. Okay, right. And we don't and we don't meet in between. Right. We're, we're trying to settle on a budget, vote on a warrant. Right. There's well, too say, much going you're on. You're not going to say you don't want to. You're saying it'd be very difficult. It, well, I know I don't want to give anything short shrift. I know, but you want to tell them it'd be very difficult for you to give the time to them that they would need. Correct. Right. I'm, not, I'm not worried about the phrase all of you. Just in time, time, Mike. <laughs> My prize is very yeah. Not much, I guess. All right. 168. He doesn't right. stop. He's always working. Do all right. Um, so if the board's good with that, so yeah. let's have Mr. Rue to reach out and just tell him just doesn't fit our window right now because of what you're The town meeting's on the 29th. We'll get them in the following meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So it just puts it off two weeks. Right. The 29th to the 4th is negotiated. No, they want to come to the meeting before. Well, they three weeks maybe because of the town meeting. May okay. Let's get the exact date. 24th, but instead of the 24th, 24th and 14th. Yeah, 30 days. That's not that right. 14 days. Two weeks. Yeah, it's called political. I, I think sing the song, huh? I was singing at my end. Can't yeah. sing along. You I don't have a, I don't think they I don't think they'll have a problem. I know yeah. they want to move. We want to. We're anxious to hear a little bit more, I guess. But I think if they want to come in, they can come in. But there's going to be no action by the board. Just indicate that right. to them. All right. So if they if they want to add something to their presentation, it's not going to speed it up. I mean, even if right. we voted, I just I need to be able to get to it. And I can't, right. can't get to it. Yeah. I mean, we could agenda it and, and just tell them negotiations don't start till the conclusion of the town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Trust your judgment on that. You know what I'm saying? I don't I mean, we can we can do some kind of action if we choose on the 21st with the understanding nothing's going to happen till after the town meeting. Or we could delegate it. Yeah. That's any further comments for the town administrator, department heads? Mr. Chairman, I move we. Oh, wait, 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 we have one last person. Is what? you okay? 
<laughs> what? Okay. All right, I just want to make sure everyone, everyone was heard. They wanted to be heard. Okay, I move to be adjourned. Motion to second. adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night.